You can download Google Earth Pro at earth.google.com. It is free. Uh, it used to cost $400, but it is now free. If you click on the resources button in the upper right hand corner, uh, it gives you Earth Pro for desktop. Um, download and it gives you a little tutorial link there too. Uh, the download takes a little uh, bit of time depending on your uh, Wi-Fi speed. Um, if you've got an Ethernet connection, you know, plug into that to download it. Um, but make sure you do it when there's not a lot of people on your Wi-Fi and you can download it pretty quickly. Uh, it's also strongly advised that you quit out of all other pieces of software uh, when you're using uh, Google Earth Pro. Uh, it work, runs much better that way. Uh, you can still have your browser uh, but I wouldn't have it open. I would have it minimized. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump in. I've downloaded Google Earth Pro uh, and we'll show you some of the things that you can do with it. Uh, and then we'll come back and show you uh, some examples of things you can build with it in another video. Google Earth Pro is right over here on my uh, uh, toolbar. Uh, you can find it in your applications menu once you download it um, and open it. Um, so I can click on this and it'll take a second for it to load. Uh, there's always a little default uh, uh, item that comes up. Uh, and I always make sure this is selected to say show tips at startup because sometimes it has little updates in here for you. Uh, I think it's a good practice to keep it in here. If you're new to Google Earth Pro, uh, it has all kinds of tips and how to do layers and, and uh, do tours, things like that. Uh, it's got some real nice uh, training stuff built into it. Uh, but I'll close this out. You just hit the little blue button in the lower right hand corner. Um, some things about Google Earth Pro, um, it works a little bit differently than Google Earth uh, in that you can export movie videos, uh, you can do things with 3D buildings over here, uh, terrain, things like that. Uh, they all exist in this little layers panel over here and whatever you have selected will show up here. So I've selected 3D buildings. Um, up in this area here is where you can record and save uh, your various tours. Um, of different locations that uh, you want to have it skip around the earth and, and show like uh, we did showed you in the training video. Uh, the tools across the top here uh, is where a lot of the magic happens. Um, this add place mark allows you when you're doing a tour to add a place mark and hold that place mark in the tour. Here's where you record it. Uh, you can record not just a tour but just zooming in on one location if you want to. ABC World News Tonight opens its newscasts uh, oftentimes by zooming in on an area where their top story is and they just record that in this uh, using this little record button here. Um, historical imagery uh, which we'll show you how to use in just a minute. Uh, you can go back and look at previous uh, versions of photos either at street view level or uh, at satellite uh, view level. Um, you have the little planet here which allows you to select Google Earth, Google Mars, or Google Moon. Google Mars shows some of the Pathfinder and Rover uh, missions on it. Uh, some great 360-degree uh, panorama photos. Same with uh, Google Moon. Uh, it doesn't have a street view level, but it does offer some photo photography from some of the NASA astronauts uh, on the various Apollo missions. There's videos, uh, all kinds of really cool historical items in there. Um, you can download any images you find on Google Earth as long as you credit them to Google uh, or preferably Google Earth. You do that by clicking Save Image. It'll download the JPEG right to your desktop, which is really nice. Zoom tools are over here so you need to zoom in on a certain area or zoom out from a certain area. And it always defaults to this little North America uh, area right here. The upper left-hand corner uh, is the search field that allows you to uh, uh, search for locations. Um, one of the interesting things about this tool is you can use it uh, for fact checking um, and that's really uh, kind of a cool uh, feature. Um, so let's say um, I'm going to search for Pulse nightclub and I'm going to type in Orlando, Florida. And it's important that you type in you know the city state where the location is because there's more than one Pulse nightclub. Um, around the country and we found this out right after the shootings at Pulse nightclub. Um, there were several photos on Twitter that were being circulated uh, of a Pulse nightclub that had an orange sign in front of it um, and you know just as I was typing in the field up there it showed the Pulse nightclub in Philadelphia. There's some in Texas. Make sure you have the right location. You can do that by checking this little card in the upper left hand corner here. Um, it's very very good uh, at giving you the address um, the website um, and, and other information in here about that location. So I zoomed in for a satellite view of Pulse Nightclub. 
Uh, you notice this little guy popped up here. This is our Google Street View uh, Finder. Uh, I can drag him across, and if I'm recording this in a video uh, uh, that I'm going to create with a tour, uh, this my cursor and this little guy don't show up. So it will just show the map and then the zoom in uh, to this area, which is kind of a cool feature. Uh, so now we draw, it drops us into the street right in front of Pulse Nightclub. Now this is where the fact checking comes in. Let's say I'm on my social media account uh, for my media outlet on a Sunday morning and people are tweeting out these photos of Pulse Nightclub and you maybe see two different versions of Pulse Nightclub. Here's a good place to go to look at it and see if it's indeed uh, uh, the right Pulse Nightclub in the right location. Uh, up here, you can look through historical imagery as well right here by clicking on this and going back and looking at previous uh, versions uh, of Street View or an overhead shot of it. Um, and as you can see, this uh, is a fairly recent Street View because it's got the memorials out in front uh, and the nightclub's basically now been fenced off. Uh, there are uh, talks that they're going to tear it down and turn it into a memorial uh, or a park of some kind. So um, you can exit Street View by going up into the upper left hand corner and it gives you the 3D building view of it so you can get a little wider view of it. Uh, again, you can export the image of that if you want to. You can turn off 3D buildings if you want uh, and just see kind of the flattened version uh, of the uh, overhead satellite version of it um, uh, as, as well. So uh, that's a real good way uh, to track um, and fact check things that you find online you might not be familiar with an area you, you know use Google Earth Pro to zoom in take you there uh, so you can fact check that area um, here I'm zooming out just to kind of show you uh, uh, you know uh, the various levels uh, that you can look at uh, in Google Earth Pro you know you can zoom in zoom out um, and look at it at various uh, uh, levels um, so let's do uh, another location I'll take you to Wrigley Field I live just a few blocks from the ballpark um, and West Addison Street, 1060 West Addison. Okay, and I'll zoom in a little closer. Note that I've got 3D buildings on. You might notice there's a lot of construction around here. There's building, they're building a hotel right here. They've superimposed the old McDonald's that used to be there. It's being to, been torn out. Uh, the, the building area here is now complete, um, uh, so this is uh, actually an older version of the photo. And there's also some construction going on down here at the bottom of the screen uh, as well across the street from Wrigley Field, right over in this area here. Uh, this is all, area has all been cleared out now um, and is under construction. Um, so let's say I want to look at an earlier image of this, maybe before the construction started. Um, I can click on Historical Imagery. And it gives me this little slider bar here. And notice it gives me some years. And there's some gaps in here. And you can go back in time and find back when this was a parking lot. This McDonald's was here with a parking lot. And all the buildings were in here that have since been torn out. So you can get an older version of this area. Um, it's good for showing before and after photos. It's a really great way to do that. Um, so uh, again, you can download that image, just grab it right out of here. Um, you know, some people do screen savers uh, uh, or uh, screen grabs of this, you know, that's fine, but you just don't get the great quality. Um, always make sure your Google Earth uh, uh, um, watermark is down here in the corner. If you do wind up cropping it out, um, make sure you put it in the cut line and credit uh, of the photo so it's properly credited. That's all that Google asks you to do uh, with their images that you find in here. Um, is that you credit them, um, which is very important. Um, let's go to Go the moon for a minute here, Google Moon. Uh, you do that by clicking on the little planet and going to the moon. I'll clear out my search field. Um, and again, there's no street view here, but you can call up various craters and mountains. You can see these little specks on here are different uh, uh, photos and different uh, missions. Um, so let's do uh, Apollo 9. Um, I usually do Apollo 12. Don't do Apollo 13. They didn't make it to the moon. Uh, but the various Apollo missions. And it'll uh, take you in and zoom in uh, on the area. So Apollo 9 produces no results. Let's do Apollo 12. Um, and we'll zoom in on the area. Uh, and it usually gives you a little uh, uh, icon of an astronaut. Um, it gives you some different uh, locations that they went to. And it has information that came from NASA about that location. It has photos you can download. 
Uh, you can kind of skip around to the next area. They did some great panorama photos. If you, uh, believe it or not, the late 1960s, they had good panorama cameras. And, and I'll give a lot of credit to the uh, uh, astronauts. They have done some wonderful uh, photography over the years. Uh, you can also download videos here. I think it, uh, my flash player probably needs updating there. Uh, so the YouTube video isn't showing up. Um, but you can gather a lot of really good information uh, about the different uh, uh, missions and locations and places that they went. Uh, and again, this is all searchable. Anything that's marked here as a survey crater or anything like that is searchable in this field up to the left. Um, same is true of, of Mars. Um, Mars, uh, you can go and search for the various uh, Pathfinder missions uh, and things like that. Uh, you can go in and type in Mars Rover and it'll take you to one of those locations. If you have a specific mission, uh, you can select it here, the Curiosity Rover, the Opportunity Rover, things like that. Um, it gives you a little selection in the pull down menu there and here's uh, all kinds of photography and you'll see that uh, the photography has much improved uh, since uh, the 1960s, uh, they have some dynamite 360 degree panoramas of Mars in here, as well as some good data into this. Um, uh, you can download the little images here. Um, it's got uh, some credits down here in the lower left of where it came from. Almost everything is, is NASA uh, related. So um, those are some of the extra features that I just wanted to show you uh, that are in uh, Google Earth Pro. Um, again, uh, the training video showed you how to do uh, Movie Maker and, and uh, uh, shoot and, and export uh, a tour, um, so we don't need to really cover that in this video.